Welcome to Dwarf Fortress and welcome to the channel, I am Twisted Logic. In this video we'll be going over what mechanical power is and you'll have an understanding of it and we're going to be building a dwarven water reactor as well as a mist generator. So hit the thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any new videos. So we're looking at Minor Solon's thoughts. And right here she was relieved remembering being near a waterfall. The dwarves are going to get this positive thought by being near mist. And that's the reason for creating the mist generator in the first place. We want to try to increase the amount of positive thoughts that the dwarves have and try to decrease the negative ones. And this keeps all the dwarves happy and uh, prevents them from going crazy. <laughs> We're going to need about four different layers of unmined area to start off with, but the majority of the build is going to take place on the third layer and the second layer. The top layer is going to be for transferring mechanical power, and the very bottom layer is going to have a very small footprint. Okay, we're going to start by channeling, and we're going to channel this shape right here, and then we're going to switch to mining, and we're going to mine until we have a 5x5, five five, just like this. Okay. And now we are going to dig a path back over to the fortress here. But my mist generator is going to be like right here. So I'm going to go up and around where the mist generator is going to be. Excellent. And we're going to build the lever room right here. Now if we wanted to, since this is a modular design, we could build another one right next to it. And we could build the third one here. We just have to leave these three walls around it. Like the, the bottom section here can be larger. But the three walls around the top and sides matter and we dug a little bit of a water pipe over to it as well but we're gonna to need to drop down the pressure down one level we're gonna mine out these tiles just like this okay however big we want to make this area uh, and these walls being in place it doesn't make too much of a difference but then but this is how they're currently getting in and out using the upward slope and the wall slopes only work if there's a wall next to them just gonna make a diagonal here and this diagonal is gonna reset water pressure to this level it's currently on so layer three here and we're just gonna connect this part to the rest of the pipe excellent so this is gonna be one body of water and this pipe here is gonna be a separate body of water so pressure is gonna be on this level excellent now we're gonna go to build and machines and fluids and we are gonna build a lever right there and we're gonna go to build machines and fluids and we're gonna build a screw pump and now this is gonna pump from the south to the north and this is gonna be built out of blocks of any material and we're gonna use an enormous corkscrew of any material and a pipe section or tube of any material we're gonna add in a door right here and this is gonna prevent flooding just in case we're also gonna build a door right here on the diagonal and this door right here, we're going to hook up to the lever, and it's going to act as a valve. Excellent. The pump is complete. So we are going to channel out the tile above the pump here. Above the output of the pump, we're going to come up one layer and channel out a tile right there. And then we're going to dig over to that. Okay, link lever. We're linking it to that door right there. Excellent. Okay, we're looking at the pump here, and I'm going to do my best to explain mechanical power. Looking at the pump, it says that the pump is inactive, so whether it's on or off, the total power that it currently has is 0, total power that it needs to move is 10, and it's on a stable foundation. Also, it tells us which direction it's pumping from, in this case, the south. The very top level of the build, layer 1, and we are going to build machines and fluids, and a gear assembly. Gear assemblies connect axles and machinery together. Okay, so we're building this on top of the channel that's on top of the pump. Mechanisms of any type, it doesn't matter what we're using there. And then we're gonna build a second one right there of any material. Okay, builder ton here is about to create the gear assembly on top of the pump. And just before he does that, we're looking at the screw pump and it says total power needed 10. Now let's watch Tun install the gear assembly and watch what happens. 
Okay, total power needed is now 15. If we look at this gear assembly right here, the total power needed is 5. So when different pieces of machinery are connected together, the total power needed of each piece is combined into a overall total of the entire system. If we now look at this gear assembly here, it's inactive, total power is 0, total power needed is 15, and it's hanging. So the hanging tag means that it's attached to another piece of machinery and it's suspended as opposed to a stable foundation of the ground. So if we were to destroy the pump that this is attached to, this gear assembly would also destroy. Okay, now we're going to go to build machines and fluids and we're going to build a horizontal axle. Okay, and we're going to set this direction to east and west and we're going to paint in the axle to connect this gear assembly to this gear assembly. This is going to require two logs and the amount of logs is going to change depending on how long the axle is. So this horizontal axle is now built and installed and total power needed is 26. So if I click on this gear assembly now, uh, this total power needed is 26, this total power needed is 26, and down one level at the pump, total power needed is 26. So all of these pieces of machinery are combining into one system. Excellent. So now let's generate some power. So we're going to go to build, and then machines and fluids, and a water wheel. Now, water wheels, for them to be effective, have to be built on open space and connected to another piece of machinery like a pump, a axle, or a gear assembly. Okay? And we're going to connect this to the pump here. And this is going to require three logs of any type. Okay? And we're going to build another one here. Three logs of any type. And then we can't build it here until we build this one. So it has to be hanging first, and then we can build the second one that's hanging off of the first. Okay? So we're building this, and then the final one. Excellent. And the doors are going to come and build that. Now, it is possible to build a water wheel on a regular floor tile. However, that's not going to generate any power. The water wheel generates power by when there's flowing water passing through it. Now, waterfalls aren't going to do this, and magma is not going to do this only flowing water. Each one of these water wheels has a total power need of 10. Okay. So they just built two and it went up to 60. Now when the water wheel has flowing water underneath it, it's going to create 100 power giving us a net of 90 power per water wheel. So this lever right here, we're going to pull the lever and that is going to open our valve here. When you have a door linked by a lever, the only way to open that door is by pulling the lever. The dwarves can't actually walk over to it and manually open. Okay, great. So our valve is now open, and let's pressurize the system. So our water is flowing into the room here. Excellent. And now this diagonal is going to reset water pressure to this level. Excellent, so the water flowing into the room triggered the water wheels to generate power which turned on the pumps and they started automatically. So we didn't even need to start pumping manually now. You can see that the screw pump is active, total power is 400, and total power needed is 66. This looks pretty good, we don't want to overfill it so we're going to close our valve, pull the lever, now if we come up to the top layer, you can see these gear assemblies are rotating as well as the axle. So we're linking this lever to this axle right here, and it's very important that we do not link it to this one. The one on top of the pump, you don't want to link it to that, because this is going to be the very first gear assembly that goes to the mist generator. So we'll be able to turn the mist generator on and off, but we'll be able to use the power for some other piece of machinery if we wish to hook up some other things to this. And if we had a second power supply over here, we can link them together. All the power generated will also combine. So this is a side view diagram of the mist generator that we're about to build. The light green tile here is the pump's input, and the dark green is an output. 
The output acts as a wall and they cannot walk on it. So let's build it. I use layer 4 to determine the location of the channels, which is going to tell me where the pumps are going to go. So if I come up one layer, one pump is going to be here, sitting on these two tiles. These are the lower pumps. The next pump is going to be here, and the next mist generator is going to be here. Okay, we're going to erase these designations on layer 4. Back on layer 3 here, we are going to channel down right here. And we're also going to remove this wall. Uh, just one tile wide right there. Okay, and we're also going to designate the output tile for the lower level pumps. So the pumps are going to sit on these two tiles, draw water from here, and this is going to be the output. Up one level, this is going to be the input for the upper pump. The pump's going to sit on these two tiles, and this is going to be the output. And we're going to remove this wall as well, because this mist generator is going to... It's going to create mist on both levels. It's going to create mist on layer 2 and layer 3. Okay, we're going to paint in the area for the other two upper pumps, just like that. Excellent. So this is the time to smooth stone everything, if you're one of the people that likes to smooth stone everything. This is the time. Okay, now remembering from the diagram, the input of the pump is the light green tile that the dwarves can walk on. The input for the lower pumps is right here. And so we're going to dig a path, just like this. Just a walking maintenance path right here. And then up one level, we're also going to dig a maintenance path right here. And this is going to be the input tile for the pump right here. This is going to be the output tile. And we can channel down in these three spots here. And we'll dig the other channel here, here, and here. And this is going to allow the water to fall back down into this channel down to layer 4 excellent we're ready to build the lower pumps so build machines and fluids and screw pump and we're going to be pumping from the right to the left okay from the right to the left on all three pumps or however many you're building and the stone that I'm using is jet so these are going to be Jet screw pumps. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to zones and we're going to create a pit or pond and we're going to put that over the channel on the lower level and accept that and pond is not full. And we're going to do this three separate times or one time for each mist generator you're building. And the reason for that is one zone is only going to designate one dwarf with the water hauling ability to fill it up. Accept that and pond is not full and so if that was one big zone only one dwarf would work all three locations okay now we're going to come up one level and remember where we dug the channel over here to create the gear mechanism we need to have a hole in order to pass power from one level to the next level so we're going to dig a channel for power and that's going to be on the output tile the dark green tile acts as a wall but it also passes power down on that same tile and now we can see the top of the lower pumps. And we're going to designate a channel. And we're going to dig out this whole area right here. This is on the upper level. So these are upper level pumps. Okay, now that all the channels are in the right spot on layer 2, we can go to build, and then machines and fluids, and a screw pump. Okay, and this is going to be pumping from the left to the right. I'm going to build that here. From the left to the right on all three. Okay, we're going to dig a channel. Up one level from the output of the top level pumps. Right here. On each one of them. Right here. And right here. Okay, this lever is in the way and needs to be moved. So we're going to remove that and dig the lever room over a little bit. And we're also going to dig a pathway to reach all of those channels. And this one right here, we're just going to dig around so that way the doors can path around it. I'm going to build a new lever somewhere over here. Okay. And if you look at this 
gear assembly, it's still disengaged even though we destroyed the lever, so we need to hook up a new lever to that to re-engage it. The new lever here is going to be linked, and we're going to go to build, and machines and fluids, gear assembly, and we're going to build one on top of each, each one of these channels, just like this. Machines and fluids, and a horizontal axle, and we're going to connect each one of these gear assemblies together, out of wood, and a wood, and then rotate east to west and get this one. Uh, these are each filled with six, seven water, which I think is good enough for me. So we're going to go to zones, and we are going to delete each one of these water zones. Because once the pumps turn on, we don't want the dwarves to keep adding water to the, to the pond here, thinking it's not full when the water's going in a loop. So all of those are disabled. And if we need to fill them up again later on, we will, with a new zone. However, we're ready to test. And let's just take a look at this before we pull the lever. Total power needed is 85. That's going to be all six pumps and everything connected to them on the mist generator side. Over here, total power needed is 61. So 61 plus 85. And then we're going to plus 5 for this gear assembly when this engages. And that's going to give us a total power of 151. Okay, he's pulling the lever now. Excellent, everything's engaged. Let's take a look. Total power is 400. That's how much is being produced. And total power needed is 151. That's every piece of machinery combined into one system. Excellent, let's go down and take a look at it. Oh, very nice. Creating mist. Yes. And now let's just put the final finishing touches onto the mist generator. We're going to go to build, construction, and floor bars. So we're putting iron bars on these three channels. And then we're going to put iron bars on all of these channels as well. So nobody can fall and nobody can get hurt. And the pump is going to be able to draw water through the iron bars, so it's not going to affect anything. Thank you very much for watching, and subscribe for more videos.